right, boys and girls, we are back today for the very last lesson in Chapter 1, which is to solve rate problems. The content objective, students will solve real-world problems involving rates, things you can actually use out in life. They claim this is going to be a 90-minute lesson. We shall just have to see how long it takes. 4. Launch the lesson. We've got video game arcades started becoming popular in the 1970s and were the height of their popularity in the 1980s. My generation, it was awesome. While the number of arcades has decreased since then, many family amusement centers still include video games. Oh, come here. Ah, uh, you hear her screaming? Often, the games require tokens instead of real money and the tokens can also be purchased in packages to save money. Moving forward, the Morgan family went to a local arcade. Mr. Morgan bought three packages of tokens for his children at a, for a total of $14.94. Later in the day, he decided to buy a, more token packages. Mr. Morgan needed to know the price of one package or the unit price before deciding how many more packages to buy. How could he use the unit price to determine the total cost of any number of packages? This is the kind of thing that we are going to be working on today. This is what we're going to be using to learn how to apply what we've been doing this entire chapter into real world problems. So let's move forward. Use bar diagrams to solve rate problems. Destiny drove 240 miles in four hours. Santiago drove 248 miles in the same number of four hours. At these rates, how many more miles can Santiago drive in nine hours than Destiny? And we're going to move through the slides to learn how to create bar diagrams to solve the rate problem. You can see they've got it set up already for us where they've got Destiny on the left, Santiago on the right, and from there we're going to move th through it. Destiny traveled 220 miles. Santiago traveled 248 miles. And now we're going to have to divide those bar graphs into four sections. So because it was one section for each hour to find out their average miles per hour. When you get done doing that, you can draw divide 220 by 4 and 248 by 4 to fill in the blanks and your supporting work is going to look like this 220 divided by 4 is equal to 55 for 55 miles per hour in each square meanwhile 248 divided by 4 is 62 for 62 miles per hour in each one of these rectangles once that part is done we can see that Santiago can drive 62 minus 55, also known as 7 miles more than Destiny. Therefore, to find out how many more miles he can drive in 9 hours, we're going to take and multiply that 9 hours times the 7 hours more that he can drive and find out that he can make it 63 miles further than Destiny can in the same 9 hour period of time. This is not a suggestion that you should speed. If the speed limit is 55, that is the limit. When you cross 55, you are breaking the law. Moving forward, can you solve this problem another way? Think about all the things we've learned. What are some other ways you could do this? I'm thinking unit rates was a good thing when we learned to do them which is essentially what we did in that problem is found out how much how fast one mile per hour was that's one good way to do it you could also take and use a table and calculate it up as using a table the ratio table so there's lots of good options on how to solve these all right i think i satisfied the noisy cat she got quiet for us use a bar diagram to solve rate problems Warehouses sell 50, a warehouse sells a 15 ounce cans of tomato sauce by the case. Each case contains six cans, which is a pretty small case, for a price of $9.96. At the local grocery store, 
three 15 ounce cans of the same brand of tomato sauce are on sale for $5.67. A caterer needs to buy 36 cans. How much will the caterer, caterer save by buying 36 cans from the warehouse instead of from the grocery store? For our think about it, why do you need to know the sizes of the cans? Do you need to use that number in the problem? Because they told us 15 ounce can right here and they repeated 15 ounce cans right here. So why did they feel that that was important? Well, that was important because they wanted to make sure that you're comparing apples to apples, that you have the same number of cans or that same size cans that you're buying for that price. So our cases, we're going to take and highlight. That looks important. That is going to be $9.96 for six cans. And then we've got um, the, 30, the three cans for... Um, we got three cans right there. We had to double highlight that. We'll do blue there and blue there. Say three cans are going to be $5.67. Moving forward. Step one, construct the bar diagrams. Now I want you to move through the slides and learn how to create the bar diagrams to represent each situation. If you're doing this from home, pause this recording, do it on your own, Think about what's happening and then come back to me. All right, so first thing we have the warehouse, which is bigger than the grocery store, but the bar is bigger because you got six cans here and three cans there, I believe. Next, they're gonna take and put the prices above each one of them. The cost of the warehouse was $6.96. The cost of the grocery store was $5.67. From here, they're going to divide the warehouse into six even pieces and the grocery store into three even pieces. Now, it looks a little funky because the grocery store's pieces are bigger than the warehouse's pieces. Don't worry about that. It doesn't make a hill of beans difference. Now that we have that done, what are we going to do next? Next, we're going to have to find out how much one can costs in each. So. You can see on the left, they've got their nice supporting work here. They divided $9.96 by six and found out that they're $1.66 a piece, which you can see listed in each one of those. And they divided $5.67 by three to find out that they were $1.89 a piece, which you can see listed in those. Now, you need to pause the recording and answer the question that's being presented to you here check your answers. Did you do it? Well, let's see here. $1.89 minus $1.66. I believe that is a 0 0.23 cent difference per can. And therefore, how much will the caterer save with 36 cans? Well, for that, we are going to need to do some math. So, I'm going to take a minute and I'm going to calculate up. There is 36 six, 36 cans, and my pen's not working. Hold on. All right, now we're working. 36 cans at 0 0.23 cents difference. 3 times 6 is 18. 3 times 3 is 9. Plus 1 from the 18 is 10. 2 times 6 is 12. 2 times 3 is 6. Plus the 1 from the 12 is 7. Add those up. 8, 2, 8. Bounce, 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 bounce. That means they're going to save $8.28. If I did my math right, let's check our answer, and it checks again. Excellent. Let's keep moving. For our talk about it, how could we use estimation to solve this problem? If you're just in a store and you don't have access to a pencil, or paper, or a calculator, what could you do? Well, I could take and just kind of round some numbers here. So I could take and say, well, instead of 36 cents, that's 40. I say 36 cans through 40. And then instead of 20, um, 23 cents a piece, I'm going to do 20. And when I multiply that, well, 20 times 10 would be $2, a piece, $2 total. And I got four of those. I'd multiply that by four to find that I'm looking at approximately, as dollars, not time, 
approximately $8 difference. Is $8 pretty darn close to $8.22? I think it is. Our check did not work, so we went on to resource number four, where I want you to pause the recording and solve this problem. They want you to use bar diagrams, so make sure you're going to use some good bar diagrams to put this problem together. Pause your recording. All right, I got my basic template set up now. And in my template, you can see I've got where Terran Road 6 miles and Dakota Road 3 miles. The question wants to know how much many more miles can Terran ride in 60 minutes than Dakota. And that 60 is going to be kind of important. Just like this 45 minutes here is going to be kind of important. And this 30 minutes here is going to be kind of important. We've got three different things that we need to be able to have a common base for. And the common base I'm going to go for is 15 minutes. Because 15 divides into 45, 15 divides into 30, and 15 divides into 60. So I'm going to start with Taryn over here, and I'm going to cut this into three different pieces because he had 45 minutes, and if we were to cut divide that up, that means that each one of his would be 15 minute sections, right? If I divide uh, Dakota's into two sections, his 30 minutes is going to have two 15 minute sections again. Now, I divided Taryn's 45 minutes into three sections, so if I rode his six, divided his six miles into three sections, that would give me two miles in each one of those sections. So every 15 minutes he can ride two miles. If I took, into, since I divided um, Dakota's three miles into 15 minutes, if I was to divide, oh, excuse me, his 30 minutes into two 15 minute sections, if I divide his three miles into two even sections, that means they would be 1.5 miles apiece. From here, we are gaining on it. We need to find out how many more miles Taryn can ride in 60 minutes than Dakota. And we got a couple choices on how we can go about this. I'm looking at it and I can see that Dakota's 15 minutes is 2 miles. Uh, sorry, Karen's 15 minutes is 2 miles. Dakota's 15 minutes is a mile and a half. So I'm going to take 2.0 and I'm going to subtract 1.5 from that. And I'm going to find a difference of 0 0.5 miles in a 15 minute time window. But we're not looking for 15 minutes. We are looking for 60 minutes right there. So to do that 60 minutes, what I have to multiply 4, 15 times 4 to get to 60. So I'll multiply my 0 0.5 times 4. And when I do that, I'm going to find the answer is going to be 2 miles more that Dakota, or Taryn can ride than Dakota. And we will put that in right there as 2. Let's go back to our answer spot, put in our two miles right here, and check it, and hmm, we are good. Now we do want to point out, this is showing your work. This is what I must see. If I see anything else, you will have done it just for, that's right, just for fun. Now we're going to stop this recording and come back in just a few minutes for part two of solving rate problems.